All right, you guys, May 4th today, section 6.3 in uh, College Algebra. We're down to having five more sections after today, so you guys are getting there. Hang in there. All right, so now we're going to be solving systems of equations today, like we have the last couple days, except they're going to be nonlinear. So you might have some x squareds and y squareds in there, but the concept is the same, and I'll work you through some of these examples, okay? So identify each equation in the system as that of a line, parabola, circle, one of the toolbox, func toolbox functions that we've learned in the past. And then determine the number of solutions possible by considering the different ways the graphs might intersect. Finally, solve the system by graphing. Well, if you recall, this is the equation of a circle centered at 0, 0 with a radius of 5. And x minus y equals 1 looks like a line. So if I've got a circle and a line, a line might never touch the circle, so I could have zero solutions. It might touch it once, it might be tangent to it, if you remember that from geometry, or it might cross it twice. So zero, one, or two solutions, and we're going to kind of look at that scenario here today. So step one, really we're going to be solving these all through substitution. So I've got to solve for one of the variables. I'm going to take and solve for x here. I'm just going to say x equals y plus 1. Okay. That being said, in this first equation, I can replace that x with y plus 1 then. So I'm going to have y plus 1 quantity squared plus y squared equals 25. Okay? And so I've got a little bit more algebra to do. That's really what this section is going to be about. So if I square this, I get y squared plus 2y plus 1. I already have that y squared there. And then equals 25. Okay? Simplifying and getting 0 on one side, so I have 2y squared plus 2y, subtract that 25, minus 24 equals 0, okay? I can factor a 2 out of all of those, so I do that, I'm left with y squared plus y minus 12 equals 0, okay? Now I can factor that. I'm looking for numbers multiply to 12 and subtract to 1. Well, that would be 4 and 3. I need a positive 1 there, so I'm going to look like this. So I think initially y could be negative 4 or y could be 3. Okay. Since I have a system of equations, though, I've got two equations, two unknowns, my solutions are going to be ordered pairs. Okay. So I'll write my solutions up here. So I think y could be negative 4 or y could be 3, okay? Well, I've solved for x right here, x equals y plus 1. So if I put a negative 4 in there, negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3, okay? So I think negative 3, negative 4 would be a solution. If y is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, I think 4, 3 would be another solution, okay? So that's how we're going to tackle most of these. It's a good idea to take those solutions and plug them back into the original to make sure that works. 3 squared plus 4 squared is 25 in both situa situations, and we knew that this one works, so that's going to be okay. So a lot of substitution here, you guys, okay? All right, so solve this system. Well, I've already got y solved for here, you guys. So I'm going to replace this y with that expression over there. So I'm going to write 2x minus x squared minus 2x minus 3 so 2x minus this y now equals 7. Simplify a little bit. So this is going to be 2x minus x squared plus 2x plus 3. Distributing that negative into the parentheses. Okay. Um, now I'm going to move everything to the right side because I want to have a positive out in front of my x squared. So I'm going to write 0 equals. I'm going to move that x squared to the right. We'll get x squared. I've got 4x over here, so I'm going to have to subtract 4x. And when I subtract the 3, I get 4. Okay? Well, that will factor. So if I come up here, 0 equals, this is x minus 2 quantity squared. Okay? So that tells me that x equals 2. Okay, it's a repeated 0, but that doesn't matter for our purposes here. So I think x could be 2. But again, my solution is an ordered pair because I have y's as well. So if I go ahead and I put a 2 in for x, 2 squared is 4, minus 4 is 0, minus 3, I'm left with negative 3 for my y-coordinate. OK? 
Okay, and I can double check here too. Four plus three is seven. That definitely works out. Okay, so sometimes you're only going to get one possible solution, sometimes two, sometimes more than that. It depends upon how the graphs work. So this is a parabola and this is a line. Here they're only crossing in one place, and that's possible. Okay, okay how about the second one here? I've got y equals again. So I can replace this y with that expression. So I'm going to have um, the opposite of x minus 2 quantity squared equals, and then my y, x squared plus 4x minus 12. Okay. I'm going to expand this side. Okay, so I'm going to square that out. Okay, I'm going to move everything to the right side, so I'm going to put a zero on this side. So negative x squared added to the other side becomes 2x squared. Distribute that negative, that's a positive 4x, so I need to subtract 4x, that will eliminate that x. I've got a negative 4, so I add 4 to negative 12 and I get minus 8. Okay, so I can factor a 2 out of that, and I'm left with x squared minus 4. And that x squared minus 4 factors 2x minus 2x plus 2. So I think x is going to be plus or minus 2. Well, again, that leads to two solutions, okay? So I think if x is negative 2, let's go back to here. Negative 2 squared is 4. Minus 8 is negative 4. Minus 12 is negative 16. And again, plug this into your calculator. You don't have to do this in your head, but plug it in and see what you get, okay? And then I think x could also be positive 2. 4 plus 8 is 12, minus 12 is 0. So 2, 0 is another solution, okay? So I've got two parabolas, and they're crossing in two different places. So that's your answer in black there, okay? All right, on to the next one. Solve the system. Okay, now I did this one a little bit differently, and um, well, we'll see, we'll see if you like it. The book does it a little bit differently. I'm going to solve for x squared, because then I can just replace that x squared with what I get. Okay, so um, I'm going to subtract this y, so I'm going to go negative 1 half x squared equals negative y minus 3. Okay, I'm going to divide by, I'm going to actually multiply both sides by negative 2 to get rid of that negative 1 half. So I multiply by negative 2, I get 2y plus 6. So x squared is equal to 2y plus 6. Okay? And so then I can replace that x squared with 2y plus 6 here. So I'm going to write 2y plus 6 plus y squared equals 41. Okay? And so I'm going to move everything to the left side so that, and kind of write it in descending order, standard form. y squared plus 2y. And then 6 minus 41 is minus 35 equals 0. That will factor. Because 5 and 7 multiply to 35, and they subtract to 2, okay? So initially, y is equal to negative 7, or y is equal to 5, okay? So I think there might be a couple of solutions here. Um, but I might be mistaken. You know, when I put the negative 7 back in here, I get negative 14 plus 6, which is negative 8. How is x squared going to equal negative 8? It's not. Which means that negative 7 is something I'm not going to be that interested in. Okay? But the 5, I am going to be interested in. Okay? For y. Now, Let's think about what happens when I put a 5 in. I go 2 times 5, which is 10, plus 6 is 16. But x squared equals 16. Well, the square root of 16 is plus or minus 4. So negative 4, 5 is going to work. And 4, 5 is going to work. And I have to take both of those into account. So you've got to be really careful with that. Make sure you remember both of those. And remember not to use the ones that are extraneous. Okay? All right. How about logarithms? We've done logarithms before. Let's apply what we know about this. Well, since y is equal to both of these, you guys, 
I'm going to just set them equal to each other. I'm going to replace that y with that equation. So I'm going to get negative log x plus 7 plus 2 equals log x plus 4 plus 1. Okay? Now, if you go back to chapter 5, when I'm solving these, I'm going to get all of the logarithms on the same side and condense it, and then I can rewrite it in exponential. So I'm going to move this logarithm over here, and I'm going to move the 1 over here. So 2 minus 1 is just 1 on the left side. On the right side, I've got that log of x plus 4, and then plus this log of x plus 7. Okay. Now, I can condense the right side because we learned back in chapter 5, that if I'm adding two logs with the same base, that's one log with those multiplied together. So if I take x plus 4 times x plus 7, that's x squared plus 11x plus 28. Okay. Now I'm ready to rewrite it as an exponential. So this is base 10. 10 to the first power, or 10, is equal to the right side. x squared plus 11x plus 28. Okay. Get 0 on one side. Subtract that 10. And then I'm trying to factor this. Okay, so are there any numbers that multiply to 18 and add up to 11? Sure enough. 2 and 9. So initially, I think I could get negative 2 or negative 9, but I gotta test these back into the original, you guys. Okay? So if I put a negative 9 in, I get the log of negative 2. And if you remember from chapter 5, I can't take the log of a negative. So I'm going to eliminate that as a possibility, you guys. Okay? The other one, the x being negative 2, that's okay. And what I would do is use your calculator to help evaluate, make sure it's the same. So in this case, you go negative log of 5 plus 2, see what you get. Log of 2 plus 1, it turns out for both of them, you get 1.3. And so that's your y coordinate that satisfies both of them. So you've got a little bit of algebra to do that we learned back in chapter five. And then we have to be a little bit aware of the domain for our logarithms so that we don't use that negative nine, okay? A couple more examples, all right. This next one involves graphing. Um, because it involves inequalities, really the solution is a graph, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve for y in both of these um, and, then, and then graph it. This one, x squared plus y squared equals 25. So if you're doing this on graph paper, this is a circle centered at 0, 0 with a radius of 5. So 0, 0, 5 to the right, 5 to the left, 5 up, 5 down. You've got a circle. It's strictly less than, so you'll notice we have dashed lines on our graph. If you were to solve for y, you'd get 25 minus x squared, and then you'd have to take the square root. So plus or minus the square root of 25 minus x squared. So I went ahead and graphed that um, in the calculator. This one here, I'd add x and then divide by 2. So x plus 5 divided by 2, that's just a line. And then I know that, you know, shaded-wise, you know, am I going to be at which side of the line am I going to be on? Okay? I know I'm inside the circle because it's less than 25 away. But I could test a point. I could try 0, 0 and see what happens. So is 0 plus 0 smaller than 25? It is for the circle, so I need to be inside the circle. But is 0 greater than 5? No. So I'm not going to be below the line. So the only way that satisfies that is in between those two. Okay, so if you want a calculator to help you out a little bit, you could graph them on the calculator. Um, if you're going to do it by hand, then you need to test some points to make sure that works. Okay? One more example. Suppose the cost to produce a new, uh, an inexpensive shoe made from a model plastic, molded plastic is modeled by the function given. And the revenue is modeled by that function, where x is in thousands, find a break-even point for this. Well, in other words, when is the, the cost and the revenue the same? Well, the only way that happens is if you set these equal to each other, right? So x squared minus 5x plus 22 is equal to negative x squared plus 10x, okay? And so this is actually a little bit easier than the rest of the problems we're going to do. We're going to move everything to the left side, so this is 2x squared. Subtract the 10x minus 15x plus 22 equals 0. Okay, I'm going to factor this. Okay, 
2x and x will multiply to 2x squared. I'm going to use 11 and 2 for 22. Okay, I've got to get to 15 though, so I'm going to go 11 and 2 so that I get 4 plus 11 to get 15. So I think x could be 11 halves or 2. Okay, now in context here, x was in thousands, so our solution. 11 halves is five and a half. Well, five and a half thousand is 5,500 shoes could be produced. The cost and the revenue would be the same. Two in thousands would be 2,000. So if you produce 2,000, the cost and the revenue would be the same as well. So this one's not quite as bad as the others that we've done, okay? I'm gonna just skip through the next one. If you wanna look at that in the book, you certainly can. I would like you to do Five through 57, every other odd, okay? The assignments are a little bit smaller now. Again, if you have questions, office hours, 11 to 11.30, or email me, I'd be happy to help you out. Good luck with this, you guys.